All right, everybody, welcome to week seven. Uh, so this week is, again, one of the weeks where we're doing a rough draft, so things are pretty well, um, pretty easy this week. Um, the first thing you'll want to do, of course, is, uh, well, watch this video, which you're probably already doing if you're listening to me. Uh, but after that, go ahead and uh, take a look at the peer review questions again. Um, be the same questions. The only thing that's going to change this time, as with last time, is now you're going to be focusing on writing project three. Uh, in this case, do they create a new perspective in their topic, and is uh, how well do you understand as the reader the new perspective uh, on the topic? Does the author make a strong case that supports this perspective? Does the perspective feel fresh, or is it rewording the same old perspective that um, kind of is the popular opinion? So those are the only two questions that really change. The rest of these questions, uh, one through thirteen, still kind of apply to the same essay, so or to the to the writing format and the writing style and the, the overall writing skill. So you can still use the rest of those questions. Um, once you take a look at those peer review questions to kind of get an idea of how to construct your own essay, take a look at the rubric again as well. Um, at this point everyone's probably become a little bit more familiar with the rubric since now we've used it twice, once on the annotated bibliography and once on the writing project 2 essay, uh, the causal analysis. So again, focus, if you're not, if you don't remember, um, you can one, take a look at the feedback I just gave you for writing project 2, uh, but other than that, this line right here, the column, I mean, this focus is your your thesis. How well do you construct your thesis in light of the SOAR acronym? Content is how well you use your in-text citations, you digest your quotes and your paraphrases, and you overall con how well you construct the overall quality of your um, of your content. Uh, that would be the body paragraphs as the content. Organization, that's your uh, introductory paragraph, your conclusion paragraph, and your overall structure of the essay. Basically, do you follow the structure uh, that I give you, or do you use your own, and is that is your, your customized uh, structure, is that effective um, in achieving the purpose that we're trying to achieve? Which in this case is, is just proving your point as compared to the uh, popular opinion. The expression is your word choice. Um, big thing that a lot of people lose points for here is using personal pronouns. So don't use words like I, me, my, our, us, those words. Use um, third person words like uh, the individual or this person or uh, one as in like one might think or something like that. Um, so try and use third person words rather than personal pronouns which are typically first person words. Uh, mechanics, that's your grammar, punctuation, spelling, but it's also your MLA formatting and your works cited page. So that's how these things work, and of course at the bottom I outline them in the comment section down here. I'll give you some feedback. Uh, once you've reviewed those two items, take a look at the uh, Writing Project 3 Academic Argument Template. Uh, this is basically where you can just kind of plug in your information. I suggest opening the Word file because that will literally let you just kind of type everything. If you use the PDF file, which I'll go back and show you, if you use this PDF file, you're not going to be able to type it in, but you'll be able to kind of read it and then construct your own in a Word file. So most people just kind of go with the Word file, but in case you prefer the PDF, it's there as well. Or if you just can't open a, a Word file, the PDF should work as well. But again, with the PDF, you can't come in here and, and type things. You have to type it on your own. Oh, that's my pen. And now I don't know how you erase the mark. Anyways, um, here is your template. And the good thing about the template is that you just fill it in. So student name, you would just fill in your student name, my name, the course name, um, or the assignment name, the date, the title. And then you begin writing your introduction, just following the um, instructions that are within each of the paragraphs. So that's kind of nice because it breaks it down by paragraph. So in the popular opinion section, it tells you exactly how to structure that section. Now again remember that these need to be uh, four to five pages so you can see if you f if you do a one paragraph per section you only end up with like two pages. <laughs> so you have to make sure there's multiple paragraphs in each section but nonetheless these single paragraphs here are my directions um, and instructions on how to create a, an effective popular opinion section, an effective your point of view section, and an uh, effective evidence section and conclusion. Um, aside from that, the one thing that everybody kind of always forgets is this, your point of view. Don't just name it your point of view. Kind of summarize your point of view and then name this section that short, a summary of, you know, more than, no more than four words or so. Let's see if I can erase that. No, I can't. Okay. Um, so like I said, you can just kind of come in here and plug everything in. And down here, I 
I gave you an example on how to um, construct a work cited um, given the three most popular types of, art, uh, of citations. There's a scholarly article, a web page, and a book. Now, um, you've already, or most of you, have already turned in your works cited page, so check the feedback that I gave you on that and make sure that you update your um, final draft or your rough draft, however you want to do that. Um, update your works cited page to um, include all the corrections that I suggested. So once you do that, once you actually um, fill in that template with your own content, uh, come down here to the Writing Project uh, 3 Rough Draft, and as before, submit your rough draft, and then go back in and provide someone with five pieces of constructive criticism. And again, remember, constructive means you have to give them something to change. So if you give them five pieces of information that are all something along the lines of good job, that's not good enough. You need something that is, you did a good job here, but I suggest changing or adding or doing something within your essay. So it can't just be good job, you have to give them something to change within their essay. That's, that's what constitutes constructive criticism. Um, the only thing that changes this week is that we're actually nearing in on the end of the semester, which is the 21st here. So the rough draft will actually be due on the 15th and our peer reviews, that is where we give the constructive feedback, will be due by the 17th. Normally we have a few extra days, but this week we're cutting it short because I want to give you time to work on your final draft. So the way that the schedule will work is today is the, seven, uh, the 10th, excuse me. Uh, your rough draft will be due by the 15th, and your reply to your peers, your constructive criticism replies, will be due on the 17th, and then the final draft will be due that following Thursday. So we have just about a week and a half left. So as always, come in here, click on Writing Project 3, create the thread, and uh, of course name it, and then browse your computer and submit the file. And then of course go back in here and uh, reply to someone else. Once you get the feedback, um, and again, if you check on the rough draft, here are the dates, um, July 15th and July 17th for the reply. So make sure you, you meet those deadlines. Once you're done with that and you get your feedback, um, come into week eight and the final draft um, assignment will be there. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me via Skype, email, phone call, or text. Text seems to be kind of the fastest. I, I see that whenever I get emails, it usually takes me a couple hours to get back to them. Um, sometimes they're short and I can get back to them quickly, but emails sometimes take a little while. So um, other than that, so if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And uh, if everything goes well, then I will see you in week eight.